<laughs> phone fell off the stand when I did that one. All right, let's put the phone back on the stand. And adjust the stand to get my head near the center without it falling. Boom. All right, y'all. I got some of the king's weed here, some tobacco, a little bit of this stuff. And uh, we got some moon oil on the forehead here. And tonight, Rainolf has been resurrected in order to do a reading for y'all. So let's get these tarot cards out. So we've got the radiant, whatever. Remember that radiant rider weight. <clears throat> The Radiant Rider Weight Tarot deck. There's your Knight of Pentacles. And I'm going to shuffle her up for you. So. Before we get into that, let's get into the energies. Our new calendar year is 2021. In numerology, 2 plus 2 plus 1. You don't add the 0, or you can, and it adds to nothing. 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1 equals 5. 5 is the number of Mars. 5 is the number of Mars. And Mars rules cutting objects like this. And conflict. I'll show you. Let's do that. I'll show you all the five tarot cards in the deck. Here's the five of swords. As you can see in the background there, these people have, they look dejected, especially the guy in the back. They're walking away. Some of the swords have clattered to the ground. I see one, two, three, four. Where's the fifth? Oh, he's got two right next to him in the same hand. So this is um, mental conflict. There's been an argument. Even the guy who won is kind of like, well, shit, you know. Look at these guys are walking away. One is a relative term. Then, let's see which next five comes out. We've got the... Five of Wands next. The Five of Wands, they're literally sparring with their wands. They're all kind of getting a whack in on each other with these big staffs they've got. And on their faces, they just look kind of fired up, kind of passionate. None of them are really crying or too sad or anything. They're all just fighting it out. <clears throat> then we've got the... The Five of Cups. Water. Air is swords, wands are fire, cups are water. And here we have a dejected, despairing man. Three cups have spilled and he's got two cups upright behind him that he's not noticing. So he's in emotional conflict. He feels all is lost. Then we have, last but not least, the earth sign, the pentacles. We see them in the stained glass window there and we see beggars walking out in the street or not even beggars just a a forlorn two people older chap on crutches and a woman with a shawl with a blanket wrapped around her head and they she is barefoot he has just some bandages and they're walking in snow okay so that gives you an idea of all the five tarot cards they're all some sort of conflict some sort of haranguing some sort of problem that people have fallen into. Similarly, this theme will play out through this year. And let's tell you about that. Five falls right about in the middle of the cycle of each of these cards, because each of the suits, um, the wands, the swords, the cups, and the pentacles, 
they all have their own journey and their own resolution if you go from the ace to the ten of each. And in numerology, the zero and the nine have some similarities. Um, the zero would be the eternal feminine, the womb, the circle, the hole, the black hole, as well as the vagina. The nine would be the god or the divine masculine. It's an odd number, so it can't be evenly divided. And But both of them, in simple numerology, in Pythagorean numerology, both of them are magic numbers or invisible numbers. Because if you add 9 to anything, you get x. 9 plus x equals x in simplified numerology when you bring stuff down to one digit. So you can think of anything in your head right now. 9 plus 4 equals 13. Then you would do 1 plus 3 for 13. You add the two numbers together and you get 4. So 9 plus 4 equals 4. If you want to do 9 plus 27. 9 plus 27 equals 36. 3 plus 6 equals 9. And 2 plus 7 equals 9 for 27. So 9 equals 9. <clears throat> or 9 plus 9 equals 9. Continue on ad infinitum. You can go, or ad infinity. You can go forever. So the 9 always brings you back to the same number. And 1,000 equals 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 1. The 0 take you back. So both the 9 and the 0 are infinity, infinity numbers or um, invisible numbers, however you want to look at it, in numerology. So I thought I'd bring that up to you. And then the 5s come in the middle. So there's some strife in the middle of these transformations. There's the ace, which brings a new beginning to a cycle of whatever suit. Then they start their journey. So here it is, this is right on the bottom of the deck, the Ace of Swords. So this is a new idea or a new mental concept that's coming into your life. And then you would go to the Two of Swords, which is a woman with two swords crossed in confusion. Uh, she's blindfolded and the swords are crossed over her body like this. Then you'd go to the Three of Swords, the Four of Swords, the Five, Six, Seven, Eight, Nine, Ten. And in Air, the Ten of Swords we see it in reverse here, I'll flip it for you, is killing the mind, basically giving up. This is what it feels like when you reach the end of a mental cycle because mentality, air, intellect, dies with the body. It's part of the rational brain that is in this, it's this avatar's computer. The intellect is the computer of your avatar. Your avatar is your human body. So the emotions that one feels do the significant emotional experiences that one's soul collects, it doesn't collect just the errant thoughts, do reach fruition. They do continue past the death with the soul. So if you look at the final cups card, the ten of cups, and we haven't even moved on into the king's queen, queen knight, queen, king, etc. But if you see the ten of cups, let me see if I can find it for us. So this is a nice little tarot lesson for the peoples here. If you see the Ten of Cups, doo -doo 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 -doo. this is the Nine of Cups, never mind. We're close. Some people already have a mental picture of the Ten of Cups in your head if you've seen tarot. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Right here. The Ten of Cups is a card of ultimate abundance. It's a family with a rainbow of cups. The two kids are playing. The husband and wife are very happy. They're embracing each other, looking out into their field. And you have a big rainbow of cups in the sky. So your emotions can go past this journey with you. So you can reach fulfillment if you go on a journey of emotional fulfillment. Now that has its own pitfalls as well. But that's just an idea of two of the different cycles. So today I'm going to be conducting a reading for the collective that will watch this video. In the past I've called this like a soul family reading. We'll see if that fits for the title of this video. But yeah, here we are. We're in a new cycle. We had the Great Conjunction on the 21st of December. 
of Saturn and Jupiter in zero degrees Aquarius, forming one big star. And it was the first in 800 years where they were at the same declination, just about, meaning height in the sky. So although they conjunct every 20 years, one is usually a little bit above the other in their path. Whereas this year, they were right on a very similar um, horizontal line from Earth's perspective. So they were right on top of each other, and it looked like one big star. One big wandering star. So, tonight I want to get an idea first. I'd like to get an idea first of where the collective that's watching this video's head is at. Okay, I'm going to cut the deck. We're going to see what we're doing here. Pull three cards. Okay. I'm getting an idea already. So the three cards that I pulled for you guys are the Page of Wands in reverse, the Three of Cups in reverse, and the Ace of Cups upright. So what I'm seeing for the general energy of the collective that's watching this video, first we have the Page of Wands in reverse. So this shows me that, first of all, if people were involved in um, getting their hopes up about things, having uh, passionate desires that things would resolve and uh, miracles would be coming and stuff like this. <clears throat> Let me rephrase. The collective energy right now feels stifled. Um, people feel as though their passions do not have an outlet, that they're not able to exert their uh, passions and wills, or that they don't feel much passion or will to achieve things right now or to overcome things right now. So there's a general lack of energy, but it's a lack of the youthful exuberance of fire. It's, an, it's a lack of youthful passion that you could tap into with your inner child or that you feel um, or that you have felt when you were younger. Passion to, to move forward and to do something that just internally impels. You, you feel like you just got to go do something. That is at a low right now. Then when we have the Three of Cups in reverse, this could show me that possibly the holidays were not emotionally fulfilling because this is a reunion of three women holding cups together. Cups are the signs of emotional fulfillment. And we have it in reverse. So I'm seeing that um, right now is a time where meetups with people who used to um, imbue good feelings in you and in, a, in an atmosphere seem somewhat um, frustrated right now. Seems like you're lacking both the youthful passion for things with the Page of Wands and the group fulfillment that you've once had or that, you, that you've dreamed of in actual reunions with friends, with family, etc. And with, with the feminine energy in general. And last we have the Ace of Cups. Now there's no people in this card, so what I'm seeing is that most people are in solitude at this point in this collective, literally or even if you're going out into the world still uh, for your job and to, to do different things that a lot of your time, even if you're around people, you feel more alone, but that there's an, uh, an emotional transformation that is either already underway freshly, that has begun around the, the new year, around this new year, these last eight days, or that there's one brimming already inside. It's already stoked and coming as we speak. 
And so this is something in talking with friends and, um, and introspecting about my own journey recently that I've definitely noticed. Um, they tell me to go ahead and tell you that what, during the holiday season, when I went back to see my family and everything, um, for me, it felt it's part partially, um, a deal of expectations and stuff, but it felt much more, um, subdued. And even though we were having good times and, um, everything was flowing well, even a lot of people commented on our Christmas day gathering with my family and a couple other families that it was, um, the best that we had ever had, that it was great. But even in all these moments, for personal reasons and for the reason that I think I'm undergoing or I know that I'm undergoing an emotional transformation myself, I felt um, much more numb and subdued than, than usual. I wasn't very exuberant or very um, being fed life by the interactions, so to speak. And that continued throughout the entire break. Um, and then into coming back here to North Carolina, the first couple days I was still kind of in a tizzy or a turmoil, um, but I've come out of that now with this Ace of Cups, if my journey is mirroring yours at all, and I've begun to um, re rekindle, restoke my own um, internal emotions. So been able to basically save myself through this emotional transformation. <clears throat> and so it's a time to look within, essentially. And the main thing is that through tough times, and um, I've made a video about this in times of chaos versus times of order, but you're, some people are likely in a time of internal chaos right now, even if the world, that could be influenced by the external world, but everything is mental and is internal first. And so what I would suggest is that you focus on the positives of what's going on and actually there's bigger things, but in the moment now, I think what's what I'm getting, what would be best for you guys is to do what you can each day, each moment, in order to stoke positivity, optimism, and um, good feelings for yourself. And that can be anything, like maybe dark music um, gives you positive emotions because it's something that's meeting you at the level that you're at or that is... Um, so what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be listening to bubbly music to feel bubbly, although that works too, but do something that you like to do each day and be creative each day. The other thing I'd like to say is that five, like we talked about in the beginning of the video, which is the number of 2021, is also the sign Leo in astrology. And the sign of Leo is all about creative expression. So each day I'd like to challenge you guys to do one thing, whether it is reorganize a table so that it looks more beautiful when you eat a meal or to draw one little picture even if it's just a little doodle sketch to write one little four bar poem or to journal one time or to dress in a way that expresses yourself uh, more flamboyantly or more outside of your normal standards to do one little creative thing each day to leave someone a nice little voicemail that you don't usually call to send a happy text to somebody um, but even those you don't need to do those as much because of the time of solitude but yes anything that's just any kind of little creativity eat one little thing or make one little meal that you don't usually make a little dessert if you can do that each day in this 2021 year that will be extremely helpful and you'll find that you you have a whole new creative passion and outlet moving forward so I'm going to go ahead and pull a few more cards here. I don't feel like clarifying any of these. I think the next right move is to move on to another two or three cards. So let's see. Okay. I'm picking up on another theme here. Boom. Okay. So here's been what's... This was also a, pro, uh, a theme that was in my life during this break. So this may mirror yours, may not, but it's happening in some way as we get from this card. So for this collective, next we have, for the people watching this video, we have the lovers in reverse. Okay. And the second card I drew is the nine of pentacles in reverse. This was there when I cut the deck per my clear audience with their, this, the spirits I'm using in this reading were telling me to do. 
and this was at the bottom of the deck. So the lovers in reverse signifies lack thereof in one's own felt state and in, in, in one's mind of union with a soulmate, twin flame, lover, important friend. There, there feels like a lack of union and a lack of connection and of merging. And that is one of the reasons why you've felt your desires and your emotional contentment have been thwarted in the recent past and currently, if it still exists for you. And when I see the Nine of Pentacles in reverse next, this is a woman who is abundant alone. She is made her own destiny, made her own life. She has plenty of grapes. She's got a little bird for a friend. She's wearing a nice flowing dress gown. And um, she is content without a man. She has made her own destiny. So what I'm seeing is a little bit of what you could call codependency, um, but I'll go more in depth because that could just be a, a trigger word. But basically, some people in this collective may have been placing the relationship itself, if not the other person that you're dreaming of coming to union with, but the relationship itself on a pedestal of importance in your life, Un subconsciously or consciously, meaning you have some feeling, and you can confirm or deny this with yourself, see how it resonates while you hear this, some part of you or all of you is saying, most likely subconsciously, if we don't come into union, me and this other person, then all of this is for naught. Or there's some defeating um, philosophy going on internally about staking your happiness on an outside force coming together. Because the thing about the lover's card is that this is somebody, whether you're this person or this person, that you're always going to be connected with um, energetically. It's a connection that you've probably already had before in past lives, and it's a connection that may be um, heavily influenced, destined to come together if things go per usual, or like 20 of the possible future roads that you could take would still lead you to connect with this person eventually, whether it be sooner or later. So basically what I'm getting now is that by focusing on your own emotional transformation, by going within and being enough for yourself, by reversing this Nine of Pentacles to being abundant on your own, and you've probably heard this before if you've been listening to other tarot readings, because uh, this theme has been coming up a lot recently, I've seen. Um, and this is something that always goes on on planet Earth. It's way more sexy and way more energetically, spiritually unifying for you to, con to, to move forward to your best place in life. Energetically, physically, you're in the best place that you've been in. All of that stuff is going to attract union with a lover much faster than staking your claim on one person, waiting around, sitting, because the energy is just going to be mismatched. It's never going to line up. So you need to set the, set the bar for yourself at this time to move forward and to um, first calibrate your emotions and your creativity, get some of that passion back. You'll be surprised. When you're in depression or in a lower state, it feels like it could last forever, that all is for naught. But that's a mind program. That's a, essentially a spirit that you've let come control your state. It's a spirit you've created. You've created your own depression spirit. And he's there running the game. But you know in your own heart that you could throw him off. <clears throat> and so by doing those things, by listening to the music, by doing some small creations, by resetting yourself, watching funny things on uh, YouTube or on Netflix, just find some way to reset your emotions. And it'll naturally start to hold. Because you'll realize that that state feels better and subconsciously you'll start to move towards that state. So right now it's all about the personal management. And remember that your identity is bigger than the little human you. Because it's impossible to be depressed if you know that you are more than just the human body. That you're your soul, your spirit, that you're also the other people walking around on earth. You're the plants. You're, the, uh, uh, you're part of everything. If you expand your awareness and your identity to more than just the little human, 
these things don't happen and you have to feel that so through meditation and through other things you'll be able to tread through this period okay nice okay we've got the knight of swords in reverse and the king of cups boom okay don't rush forward to do anything mentally aggressively literally don't call the person you're thinking of right now this is a suggestion you can do whatever you'd like don't call and text and um come at people from your lowered state right now or rush forward out into the world to to do something as you see this is the fastest moving night the wind is rushing through his hair the horse's mouth is like hanging open like holy shit this guy's riding me like a demon and this young knight of swords is rushing into battle before his other guys are even there. So don't go rushing ahead with your intellect. And this is also signifying your racing mind. Your mind is thinking of, oh my god, the holiday I fucked up during the holidays. Or um, my union with this person isn't coming true like I, I, I knew it would at this point. Or the world is in turmoil. Or I feel like shit and blah, 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 blah. Just mentally ding, 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 ding. Left brain is, is firing off for you. You've got to quiet that left brain down. You've got to quiet the thoughts, quiet. So you have to sit in meditation. You have to become engrossed in something else, whether it be a, a song, a show, a playing of an instrument, singing. Singing has been amazing for me. If you sing during the day, just along to one of your favorite songs, if you like rap, look up the lyrics and rap a whole song while you listen to it. Do something where your attention cannot be on thoughts. The only thoughts that is on is what's the next lyric that I'm going to sing or what's the next chord in this song that I'm listening to. If you can move past, because music is, is all water. It's all Neptune, Poseidon energy, um, like that. So if you get past the ace, this is all about emotional fulfillment. All of your positive, all of your upright cards in this deck are water cards. So you had the ace of cups upright. That was the only other one earlier. Now you have the king of cups upright. The king of cups upright, as you can see, he's his throne is on the waters. So he's riding the emotional waters on top, on his throne, in full fulfillment. So they're telling you, this reading is telling you, and I'm telling you, and the spirits are telling you, that you are the king of your own mind state. You've reached fulfillment on your own. You've reached the nine of pentacles upright, abundant, alone, self-sufficient, independent, feeling fulfilled within oneself, and King of Cups, you've reached emotional stability and fulfillment before. Right now, you've been thrown into turmoil because you feel passionless. You feel like you've been thwarted in um, relationships and in emotional fulfillment recently. But that you have the ability, ability to control your own emotional state through expanding your identity, through manipulating your own subconscious mind by tricking it. Um, in the short term, and then by programming it in the long term. So affirmations, if you repeat, if you look at yourself in the mirror and repeat affirmations to yourself, or if you listen to positive hertz frequency music while you sleep, there's all on you, there's all of them, you know, 432, 528, 639. For each chakra, there's a, a hertz that's been assigned in the solfeggio frequency that you can watch and if you listen to that while you sleep you'll wake up and you'll naturally your dreams will have been richer and you'll be in a better state already so there's many ways that you can get out of your own turmoil your own racing thoughts feelings of no passion feelings that your relationships are not fulfilling and feeling like you're not enough on your own all of this is part of your transformation you're being initiated into this new cycle by going through the low part of the sine wave, the dip, by reaching the bottoms first. And then you'll learn, as you start to summit the peak, once you get yourself out of the depths, you'll always know how to get yourself out of the depths in the future. And it's likely that if you've been on Earth for a while, you've done this in the past, but you're having some self short circuit that doesn't want to, it wants to stay sad. It wants to stay desireless because you feel like you deserve it. And that could be the case, you're welcome to stay in a low state if you want. I'm not gonna tell you you have to get out of a low state. But what I'm telling you is that you have the tools that it's naturally gonna occur in these next few days, but that 
this is a great time. It's It could naturally occur. You could also choose. You always have will to some degree to stay depressed or to stay in a, a lowered state of consciousness. But by telling you, by knowing for yourself through affirmations and through manifesting your desires and learning that you can ride the wave, you will always be able to get out of these cycles in the future. So really, you're being given a gift in this time. That's what the Ace of Cups is. It's an emotional gift of showing you that you're in control of your emotions. Once you break out of this cycle, you'll see the past few weeks from a whole different landscape. And what I also want to tell you is that's happening right now as we speak, because tonight, Mercury goes into Aquarius, and by the 13th, Mercury is going to catch up to Saturn and then to Jupiter. So we're going to be, begin to understand mentally, we're going to be, begin to put the, put the patterns together of what's been happening since the Grand Conjunction. Because when Mercury comes along, he adds the communication, the intellect, the understanding to the conjunction that just happened. So he'll pass Saturn and we'll be like, oh, this is how Saturn's feeling. This is what happened for me in some extent. And then he'll hit Jupiter, which has moved a little faster than Saturn at about four or five degrees Aquarius. And you'll say, oh, this is what new expansion I've gained, new emotional buoyancy, new ideas. So within these next five days, within the next week, uh, by, by the time we reach the 13th, you will already be pulling out of this cycle mentally. You won't be the Knight of Swords anymore. And this is a timeless reading, so this is just for the people who happen to see this right away in the next three or four days. But it's your job for the rest of your life, always, to control your own emotional state. It is difficult, but that even saying that is a negative manifestation. It's not difficult. By knowing that who you are, by continuing to go on a self-seeking, self-discovering journey, you will realize that you're the kind of being, the kind of soul spirit that can always ride the waves of humanity. You are greater than humanity, but you are enjoying your life experience because you choose to, because you only resonate with your soul's development. And you'll learn that the bad times, which inevitably, inevitably come, even if you're a wizard or a magician that holds the pendulum, holds the law of motion on one side. Because this is what you learn. One of the laws of Tehuti is the law of motion. So say this pendulum's going back and forth. Good time, bad time. Good time, bad time. This is what most humans are living on, is this pendulum swing. This happens, it's a law of the universe. It always happens. The magician learns to hold good because they keep their emotions always good. They don't let the pendulum swing to bad emotions because they are in control of their emotions. Even they may be hit with an emergency where the world, their physical body, their human body is in a car accident. So it's in a bad situation, but their emotions are still good because they can control their emotions. They're like, okay, my arm's broken. We got to figure this out, but I'm not devastated. I'm just a God having a human experience. You see what I'm saying? So your emotions are under your control. We just pretend like feeling sad is a necessary thing, but it's not. You see? So, and you can choose to feel all of them. You can feel the whole range of emotions. What do you think artists do? Why do you think they have sad songs, good songs? They let their pendulum swing like this. They want to feel the lowest of the sad, the best of the good, you know? But that's for each one's own journey. You are in control of that pendulum swing once you learn that it exists. Okay, and I'm going to get the final card is the Four of Wands. 11-11, ultimate fulfillment. And that could be also January 1st. Or if you're seeing a lot of one 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 ones. So this is showing that through your transformation, through your journey, you will reach ultimate fulfillment both with a lover and with family and in yourself, most importantly. So I want to tell you guys, you are the master of your own ship. You are the master of this human body, this humanity. There's a soul and a spirit behind this human that you're watching talk to you right now. And during this reading, he shone through a little bit because I was willing to step out of the way and I was in an emotional state. He controlled this brain to put it into the right state where this human body would make a video. Because this human body wouldn't naturally just sit here making videos all the time unless the soul and the spirit who's supposed to help you guys and to help himself and to spread knowledge told the human body to do it. Okay, so we can all do this. So get on, get a, get a hold of your emotions, become the King of Cups, 
by knowing that you can control the pendulum swing. You can always choose how to, how to act, how to feel in a, certain motion, in a certain moment and that you'll get better as you go. And that this transformation is setting you up for much more success in overcoming as you move forward this year of conflicts. So, I love you all. I'm back as Rainolf. And have a great night, day, evening, morning, whenever this finds you.